Hello and welcome to the 11th video in this beginner series, writing an application using Vue and Vuetify. So carrying on from the last video then, selecting our nation, we get our nice table, we can turn our details on and off. I'd like to in this video not do any coding at all, I'd just like to do some styling. And now if you're an expert in CSS, um, I apologize, this video is going to be a little bit boring. I'm assuming this is beginners, so it's all good uh, refresher. I am not a designer and I'm not particularly a CSS expert either, but we're going to use some CSS just to make this look a little bit uh, a bit nicer. But I want to make a disclaimer that my definition of nice is obviously not what everybody else's is. And um, as I said, I'm not a particularly good designer, but I think we can make this look a little bit better. So going into the code, um, the first thing to note is that inside the folder, mine's called the application folder, mine's called lesson 11 now. We've got the data folder, the scripts, but I've also added a styles folder and in there there's a styles.css which at the moment is an empty file. At the top of index.html I've linked that file here so that we can actually use the styling we type in there. But the first thing I actually want to do, I want to turn our application page, which is white at the moment, I want to take the actual application page and make it dark. because I like the dark theme better that comes automatically with Vuetify. To do that, we simply have to in the V app type dark and it'll already know to select the dark theme. If I now go back and refresh the page, we'll see that we get something nice, dark and gray. We get nice highlighted lighter text and things are already looking remarkably better than they were. The next thing I'd like to do is do a little bit of work on the table and the first thing I'd like to do is give our table uh, an ID and I'd like to give our table an ID uh, of player table. I've pre-prepared most of this so you don't have to watch me typing loads of stuff out and getting stuck with my keyboard as usual. I'm going to call the table um, player table and inside the styling here what I want to do is I want to take my player table element and I want the first thing I want to do is actually make the width of the table 100% of the parent so at least it fills the width of whatever it's sitting in so it looks a little bit better. And the other thing I want to do preparing for later is just set the border collapse so that we only get single borders. So if I just refresh the uh, page then let's have a quick look at what we've got. Um, load up England and now we've got a table which is actually occupying the full width of the page so we're already looking a little bit better. Uh, the next thing uh, I want to do then is I want to look at the actual images because the images on the page are quite big in fact they're much too big so I'm going to fix these images that's not always the best thing to do but it doesn't matter in our case I guess. So I'm going to fix the images at a, a fixed width and height so I'm going to fix them to 64 pixels wide and 64 pixels high just to uh, limit a little bit the size of them on the page because they were just looking in my opinion a bit too big. So I'm just going to go back into the application then and we should see markedly smaller images sitting on the page. Indeed we do. And now the next thing I want to do then is actually the uh, borders and stuff uh, on the, uh, the the table data and headers as it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is select then our player table with our ID and take all of the table data and ta table headers in there and apply some of this styling to it. And the first thing I want is a border and I also want to set the text color slightly different as well something I pre-prepared earlier. So let's go back into here by the way if you're not familiar with uh, CSS I'm saying a one pixel solid border of this color here in hex and here I'm just setting the uh, the text color. So I'm just going to uh, save that file, go back into the site and let's see what our changes look like. We should have a little bit of a border now and I apologize again if you're already familiar with CSS. And now we've got a bit of a better looking um, setup here with a border around the badges and stuff. Um, we could do with a bit of padding on here. So let's add some padding as well. So I'm just going to go and add some padding. I'm going to set that to eight pixels here. So at least we've got some space around the images and things like that inside our table. So it doesn't look quite so squashed up. There we go, that's already looking a lot uh, neater and nicer. Uh, the only thing I'd like is a little bit more padding uh, around the details on button and I'd actually like the details on button to sit over to the left as well in this case. I don't want it in the header in the center like it is by default. So what I'm going to do then, now I could, I'm could i actually going to do a text align on the headers and move all of them over to the left. You could of course set something specifically for an ID, specifically for this table header here. I'm not going to do that, I'm going to move them all over. So I'm just going to take the table header and close this off and then just add in 18 pixels for the padding at the top, 18 for the bottom and then align the text to the left as well like so and now we should have a much uh, sort of neater looking table hopefully. 
I'll just select Germany, yes, and things are now looking quite a lot neater and quite a lot better. The only other thing I'd like to do now is I'd like to have, you remember in the original app we could hover over these rows, I'd like to be able to hover over a row and highlight it, but I don't want to uh, highlight this top header row when I hover over it. And that's often a little trick that some people don't really know how to do in CSS, so I thought it would be a nice thing to show anyway. Um, I, I repeat, I'm not really an expert, but what basically we want to do is this first row here, I'm going to give this a class and we're going to make this uh, no hover. So anything in our application uh, that has a class of no hover is not going to have the hover styling applied to it if the mouse hovers over it. So we know to ignore this row. And then inside the CSS, what I can do is say, a little bit of a convoluted line, but I can say every table row that isn't, so is not, and then I put inside here dot representing a class and no hover. So anything that isn't no hover, then I actually want to set some styling in the case of a hover. And in this case, I'm going to set the background color to something that's quite a bit lighter than the background cover color that we have like so. So what that should do is say, if I hover over anything that isn't our class now hover, then set the background color to this. So let's just refresh. Hope this works. Select nation, select Argentina. And now you can see I'm hovering over details on, nothing happens, and then I hover over the rest of the rows and I get that row then highlighted for me, ready to click and open my dialogue later on. Good, so that's it then for this video. No real coding or programming, just a little bit of CSS to start making things look a little bit neater before we move on with all our dialogues and stuff like that. I hope it was clear. Um, as always, any comments, criticisms, questions, welcome in the section below the video. See you in the next one.